and then mute it when service. Yeah, you know how to mute it. Yeah, when it will handshaking time, just do that. Okay. Thank you.
And we want to be seeing, we're going to sing one more together. There's a few pages fast, it's 11. I love the words of the song, He Hide My Soul, Cleft in the Rock. Let's sing it out tonight. First, second, last, stands up. 6 and 11, you're going to post the words up the screen for me. Let's sing out some more. Wonderful Savior. Oh, wonderful Savior. Seeing around here, 
uh, this summer. We, we've had almost four to five brand new families in here this morning from the 15 visitors, brand new visitors in this building this morning. That was a precious blessing. Amen. And Miss Sue uh, didn't get enough preaching this morning. She come back to get some more tonight. Amen, Miss Sue. And uh, I'm so grateful God touched her heart today and pray the Lord just help you. And we're glad she's here back with us tonight. Amen. Amen. And so I, I, I'm thankful. Listen, I, I'm feeling uh, the Lord doing something. If we put a little bit of effort behind what we're doing, we'll see some results. Amen. And every one of you teams and every one of you that are going on, get together and come back together and figure out something that you can come up with. And, and who knows, family here, family there, God's bringing them from all directions. Even brand new visitors come off the road, off the street today, and just traveling through. God bring them in here with us. And that's a blessing. And I, I, I like to see this, see what, uh, see what God does. And who knows what the Lord might do. He, he passed by and speak to hearts and even save souls. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. And I, I like what Miss Sue said today. It's what I need in my heart. And about half this crowd needs. She said, I need to repent. Amen. Right. And I, I do too, Miss Sue. Amen. And, and a whole bunch of them in here and need to repent as well. Don't ever get over repenting. Amen. 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 It's free preaching for tonight. But praise God, we need to be repentant. Amen. <clears throat> get back on track. Get back into the Lord. And God will wipe it all away and cleanse you and start you on a brand new course for Him. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. Amen. Well, uh, ushers, y'all come on this evening. Let's receive the offering. And you do your best to give. Do what you can. I'm thankful for this church, the work of this church. And uh, I, we've been telling other churches about these guys coming. Uh, Ryan Free. I hope that you'll tell somebody, bring a friend. And uh, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. It's going to start at 7 o'clock. And we'll try, <clears throat> we'll try to... If you want to get in here early, maybe we might make some hot dogs or something something we can munch on to eat on before then, before the service, uh, if you want to. And uh, we'll figure we'll let you know about all that as it comes along, okay? And don't forget now, Sunday night, this Sunday night, we'll have a vacation Bible school family night. We're going to be eating then and fellowshipping also next Wednesday night as well. So we want you to be a part of this and enjoy these folks that are coming to us for vacation Bible school. It all be wonderful. And uh, you bring your children. If you didn't register your children, your grandchildren, register them so we'll know they're coming. And uh, get them on in here. Let's have a great time in the Lord with them. All right? Amen and amen. All right. Brother Vernon wasn't feeling too good today. He's here tonight. Brother Vernon, pray for us, buddy. God bless you. Father, you Yes,
Ladies. Amen. Ladies. That's a song we don't hear that much anymore. We used to hear it a whole lot. I don't see the flame. The old rugged cross. Amen. She talked about this morning. Folks, if you bypass the cross, you just may as well hang it up. Yeah. Right. Because there ain't nothing else. Right. But it's been a good day today. The Lord's been very gracious to us and Amen. smiled upon us. And and so uh, we're looking forward to a good evening this evening. Yeah. Pastor was talking about his wife and her birthday. Mm. And you know why he didn't want to tell her age? He, he got he got to go home and go to sleep where she is. You, you think his hair is short now? If he gets a haircut like Samson, he won't get a haircut for a long time. <laughs> but then it, it, it is nice that you can laugh and have a good time in church. Uh, a lot of folks they they, they think of that, you know. If I go to church, I can't have no fun. Yeah, that's... You know, and I've told folks over the years, now how in the world can you say you enjoyed yourself when the next day you can't remember where you went, right. what you did, yeah, right, right. who you were with, and you can't buy enough to leave to shrink your head. Right. Anyway, that's their problem, not mine. Stand with you, good fellowship together, men of the two. Hey, boy.
up for a little girl. Who else is for a Who else? Sharon, you tried to slip by too, did you, girl? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Who else birthday? Who else this week or next week? Lloyd? Oh, Miss Jacob, what's this little girl's name right here? Huh? Emma, how old are you today, Emma? Seven. Seven. I was picking with her. I said, you're only six years old. She said, I'm going to be seven next week, man. So she's going to be seven years old, okay? Miss Sharon, I know that you won't mind me doing this, and uh, we, we uh, apologize. Miss Emma is visiting us, and emphasis on visiting us. Amen. This is their grandchildren, child. Is that right? Great grandchildren. You got great grandchildren, brother. I ain't been home tonight. So, so Miss Emma, I, I forgot about it. So, what I need you to do, and I would do it, but I don't have a dime in my pocket. Does anybody have any dollar bills? I'm going to give this little young one. Miss Emma, I want you all to raise the dollar bills, okay? Because the preacher was so forgetful. And I, I was saying to her, I'm sorry about giving her some dollar bills. So, y'all help me for this. Miss Emma, all right, raise them real high. Miss Emma, you go get them, all right? You go get them. Everybody's got their hand raised. I got a dollar bill for your birthday, all right? So, let's help little Miss Emma right quick. Praise God. Amen. I hope nobody else turned to seven in here today. We've been the whole house in short. Hurry, Miss Emma. I see hands everywhere. My goodness gracious. I'm going to borrow some money from you tonight. Come on. There's a whole lot of them everywhere. Look at all these hands right here. Hurry, hurry. Somebody else help her. Miss will take off the help her. Help her, Miss Amanda. Help her. Help her. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get them for that young Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, Miss Emma, they're getting the rest of it for you. So that's a whole bunch, whole bunch. All right, come on up here, Miss Emma. Come on up here, right here. Wow, look at that. Let me see it. Amen. Change that girl's life. Amen. Come here, Miss Emma. Come here. Come up here. Come up here. Show them what you all got. My goodness gracious. Uh, you're my new best friend. Go get some more. Go get it. Look out here. I'll tell you right now. Go get some more. There's some more. Hurry. Got to sing. We got to sing for you. Hurry up. Come here. We're going to sing for you, Emma. Come on up here. You're my new best friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Just put it there. All right. Come on. Come on. We're going to sing. Y'all help me sing for the seven-year-old here. Here we go. Come here. All right. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And Miss Sharon. Happy birthday.
left. That's yes, what we need left here. Amen. Amen. And to see more, more involvement like that. And I praise Amen. God for it. Appreciate Amen. you doing that tonight. Well, Amen. We've got uh, just a couple of points tonight. I started a little bit of something last week that I wanted to continue on. Might be doing it a couple of weeks more. And uh, Hosea, the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse number 12 is our key verse. It's a significant verse in the Old Testament, what God's saying to Israel, and he's been saying it to, to you and me, and uh, I'm talking about fallow ground, breaking up, breaking up our fallow ground. And last week I, I was talking about the causes of hard-heartedness and breaking up our fallow ground. You fellas that plant, and you fellas that do garden, you come out there after a year, and winter time's over with, spring comes, you got to break that ground. That ground that got hard and winterized, you got to till it and turn it and, and soften it up, and because it's become hard, and that's what we're talking about. And uh, last week we discussed a little bit what causes uh, hard hardness, and the one that we went over was the ingratitude and ill use of blessings uh, create foul of ground. We were talking about gratefulness and the fact that, uh, you know, we need to learn more about being grateful for what we have. Are you grateful tonight? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, I, I said something, being grateful when you are blessed. That's real easy. It doesn't take much faith on that. Uh, but then there's another, the second level. I said something about being grateful for the hope of blessings to come. And uh, we, we need to be grateful, even though the blessing had not got here yet, just be grateful uh, for the blessings that are coming. And then being grateful during a trial, amen, that requires a whole lot more faith. And stay amen. in there and hang in there and be grateful even in the midst of a trial. How about amen. that, amen? And so uh, we, we learned a lot of things about that. I've only got two points tonight, and it's going to take me a little bit to get there. And so let's look at uh, Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12, just to read our verse. And then we're going to go back and look into verse number 2 is where we're getting to, and verse number 3 tonight. All right? So, verse 12, so to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. If you sow righteousness, you'll reap something. You'll reap mercy. And that's what God's trying to get them to do. Break up your foul of ground. Why? Why do we break up our foul? For it is time to seek the Lord <coughs> till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And uh, that's what we need more than anything is to break up our foul of ground in our time, in our day. Amen? Amen. For it's time, it's time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. There's going to come a time when there'll be no time. Right. There's going to come a time when you won't be able to seek Him and sow in righteousness. Amen. Right. Because that, that time's coming where Jesus is going to come. Amen. And it's all going to be over with. We'll be with the precious Lord uh, and Savior forever. So uh, we need to seek Him and seek Him now. I'm going to say a few things tonight about this hard-heartedness and, and uh, deal with a few things tonight that hopefully will encourage you and help you. And get you on the right path. That's what I want to do. I'm not here to browbeat you, beat you up or anything. But if it's hard, it needs to be broken up. That's right. Amen. 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 And so, uh, the, the second point that we want to get as far as is uh, what causes this hard-heartedness is number two, what we call instability and insincerity. Instability and insincerity create file of ground. Look at verse number 2, chapter number 10. Chap verse number 2. The Bible says in verse 2, their heart is what? Divided. divided. You see that? They're unstable there. you got a heart that's divided, it's not, it's not too stable. Amen? And so, now shall they be found faulty. The Bible says, he shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Let's have a word of prayer and talk about this instability tonight. Father, be with us tonight by the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for these precious times that we can come together. And Lord, Brother Kenny didn't know, Lord, what we was preaching on tonight. 
But Lord, you are the one we need tonight. And we need to let you know that we need you tonight. So help me with that tonight. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord, for what you've done. It's been a good day. We thank you for what you're going to do tonight. For the blessings that's already coming this way, we give you praise. Thank you tonight. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. We see uh, that Israel's heart was divided. We see that not only, as we looked at last week, will ingratitude and ill use of God's blessings lead to foul of grand hard hardness, but instability will and insincerity will. And uh, it will create the same effect in our lives. Hosea says that the hearts of God's people were divided. All right, let's do a little bit of Hebrew here. The word divided there carries the idea, can be translated, the word divided can be translated here, deceitful, faithless. Here's the word you can get, slipping. Fickle is a good one. Hypocritical. Or another word would be the word smooth. Are y'all with me tonight? Their heart was smooth. Their heart was smooth. Their heart was deceitful. Their heart was faithful, slipping. And so these adjectives all describe the conditions of God's people and their disobedience here. Their hearts were smooth in the sense that it was easy for them to sin and rebel against God. You're in a dangerous place when sin becomes easy and real smooth and you can just smoothly disobey God. You're in a dangerous position. Amen. They're divided. That's what he's saying. When people get into the habit of sinning, it becomes easier to do it, doesn't it? Huh? When iniquity abounds, our love waxes cold. When we, when, when we get a cold and hard heart, when we allow this coldness and smoothness to come in, the smoother you let things come in, the smoother you let things go by, the smoother you don't put a check on it and stop it in your life. Are you with me? Things go by, we slip, we let, we let it go, we let it slide, so to speak, slipping under the carpet and, uh, you know, thinking nobody's looking, nobody's paying attention, God's always looking. Right. Amen. Amen. And so we see here uh, that the Old Testament all elsewhere speaks of, of lips and tongues that are smooth. Uh, Proverbs 5 and verse 3 says, The lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb there, and her mouth is smoother than oil. You better be careful. Amen? Right. Sin can be very smooth, and it can really be slippery and sliding. And it will get you. God's people were fickle. That's what was going on here. Uh, they were unfaithful and the Lord was not going to put up with it any longer. How about that? Let me just stop right here and say this right here in this church right here. What if God was to say tonight in this church to everybody acquainted with New Hope Baptist Church, I'm through with the smoothness and the fickleness and the unfaithfulness around here. What if God said he was through with you, with you and everybody that's doing it? Praise you, brother. He's telling them here that I'm going to break down your altars. In other words, the Hebrew there carries the idea, I'm going to break the neck of it. I'm going to break, just like an animal would have a broke neck or a human would have a broke neck, God is saying, I'm going to break down their necks. I'm going to break their altars in half. I, I, God just, they, they professed to worship God, but they were worshiping idols instead. Their profession was insincere and there was faith. The behavior of the Lord's people indicated an unfaithful, flattering, hypocritical, slippery heart that rendered the Israelites faulty and guilty before God. And may I say, just as God is saying that to Israel, it's a going on every day. Let me say it my way. we got too many slippery Baptists in our church today. Right. I love you tonight, and I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. We just don't need this fickleness and unfaithfulness and none because, listen to me tonight, it only affects you. Amen. And usually it comes out of you, and then it affects somebody else eventually. Amen. Who wants to be around somebody that's always slick and slimy, hypocritical? And they show one side and they live another. Amen? Come on now. Amen. Amen. And the word now defines sharply the turning point between God's love and God's wrath. God said, 
Uh, I'm told you that the existing conditions cannot continue. They must soon come to an end. And God says, I'm going to break it down. Literally, I'm going to break their neck of it. Like we said, all throughout the Bible, all throughout Scripture, God is constantly challenging us to make up our minds about whom we are going to live for. Amen? It'd be good tonight for all of us to make up our minds what side of the field we're on tonight. Amen? amen? Well, amen. You young people need to make up your mind right now. In a young life, in your, while you've got youth on your side, you need to make up your mind right now. And I will try to convince you tonight that it's worth it to make up your mind to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 It pays great dividends tonight. But this ingratitude and insincerity and uh, things like that, it's just, a, it's just God doesn't like it. And our indecisiveness irritates Him. God wants us on one side of the fence. Amen. He wants you on His side. Amen. Amen. God does not like a wishy-washy attitude when it comes to the way of our living. He, he knows if we do not decisively live for Him, if we don't decide, we won't do it. Amen. You've got to make a decision and come to that decision and stick to it, amen? Because if you don't make that decision, you won't make that decision. Right. Amen. amen? I'm grateful the greatest day in my life when I make that decision. I'm going to live for the Lord. Amen? amen. Changed my life that day too. When a person's unstable or off balance, his tendency is to fall, and that is why many Christians do and what they do spiritually. Their instability and their insincerity lead to a hard heart. The issue of instability and insincerity and a divided heart is addressed throughout all of the Bible. Listen to some of these verses. Write these verses down go home and read them later on. Jeremiah 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, And yet for all this... Her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but faintly, saith the Lord, but faintly, saith the Lord. In other words, God said, they did turn their whole heart, but faintly. The word faintly there means they pretended, that they pretended to be sorry. Mm. You're on dangerous ground when you act like you're sorry and you're not. Right. Amen. Being pretenders. First Kings 18.21, Elijah came to all the people and said, How long hope you been to opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if he be Baal, follow him. And the people, and the people answered him, not a word. Amen. And so we see here, you've got to decide. Matthew 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, love the other. Amen. Uh, or else he will hold to the Lord and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Amen. Right. You've got to get on one side of the fence. You can't hold on to both of them. Amen. Amen. And there's a lot of Christians trying to do that. Live in the world and come to hold on to God on Sunday. It don't work like that. Right. Amen. 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 James 4, 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, I know you not that the friendship of the world is in me with enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You're either a friend of God or you're a friend of the world. Which one do you choose tonight? Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we've got, we've got to get this. And, uh, and so uh, uh, the Lord is talking about the words double minded. How about that? The word double minded comes from the Greek word which means <coughs> having two souls. Double minded means having two souls. Doubting, hesitating, double minded. Fickle, wavering, uncertain. That's what the word double minded. The double minded man is pulled between two worlds and two masters, and he can't make up his mind what decision to make. How about that? Are you double minded tonight? He's a man of divided loyalties. This makes him wishy washy and unstable in all his ways. The word unstable, the word means fickle, it means not nailed down and restless. Amen. What good are you to a church if you don't make a decision and get on one side of the fence or the other? Amen. Well, I'm just going to take the middle of the road. That sounds real spiritual, but it don't mean nothing. Stand for something. Stand for something. Stand together for something as a church. Most my experiences in church is usually the ones <laughs> that didn't stand are the ones that ended up being the trouble. Hello? Right. I'm just I'm just telling you, I'm not talking about this church right here tonight. I'm talking about my past experience. Yeah. Hello? Amen. 
Amen. I mean, the ones that were unstable usually ended up being the cause of most of the trouble and problems in our churches. I've been there and done that. Got a t-shirt for it. Amen. I'm just trying to help you tonight. Get on one side of the fence. Amen. Amen. Get on the God side. The man with a divided heart leads to a distracted, restless life. His life's not controlled by the wisdom of God. Some folks will not trust Christ as their Savior because they're double-minded. Their indecisiveness is, in essence, a decision. It's a decision not to trust Him. God wants you to make up your mind. Amen. And the greatest decision in your life is to make up your mind for Jesus. Amen. I'm glad I made up my mind. I made the right choice. He gave me a choice. I made up my mind. Amen. And so uh, Joshua, Joshua tells us that one wonderful verse there in Joshua 24, 15. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. It was either the weather of the gods uh, which your father served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. It's Joshua said, you choose them gods that your daddy served or you choose the gods that were in this land. But as for me and my hand, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Joshua stood in front of everybody and made a declaration, I have never had Jesus. And let the world go by. Amen. You need to make that decision tonight. Amen. Amen. Don't be wishy-washy and unstable. So, uh, so we see here, we see here the causes of, of hard heartedness is instability and insincerity there tonight. I'm trying to help you tonight. I hope you're sincere. Amen. I hope you're stable. I hope you made your mind up tonight to be stable. Uh, here's the third one here. Here's number three. I'm doing pretty good here. This is my last point. It's going to take a few minutes. Amen. Amen. Uh, the third one is indifference. What causes hard heartedness? Indifference and an, catch it now, an independent spirit create foul of ground. Look at verse number three here. An independent spirit. Verse three. For now they shall say, watch this, we have no king. Because we fear not the law. What then should a king do for us? You see that? Say, so we don't want no king. What's a king going to do for us? What they're saying is they're saying, we don't need anybody. We don't want nobody. Amen. We don't need anything from the Lord. We just, we just stay independent and uh, be indifferent about it. I mean, that's what, uh, for now, they shall say. They're, they're saying, they're not letting God say. They're going to tell you what they say. Amen? And, and, they, and this indifference here. Look at the last part of verse number 13. It said, well, verse 13 says, You plow wickedness. You reap iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of life. Because thou distrust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. You're trusting in you right here. You're trusting in your might. Why do we need anybody over us? We don't need no king around here. We don't need nobody telling that. We don't need a leader that God gives us. How about that? In other words, that's create the final ground. I, I believe tonight, in this section that we find here, God speaking to his people, we find that God's people disclaim any need for God and any need for a king. They're saying by not, by not wanting a king, they didn't want God either. How about that? Right. I'll tell you tonight, in their attitude, we see how far uh, the nation had fallen. That's not the way they were over in Mount Sinai. Amen. I mean, God gave the law over there, and they determined after Moses straightened them up about that golden calf, say amen right there. Right. They decided they'd go follow the law. But over the years, over the progression of, of hard heartedness, it uh, became a down spiral, if you will. And what happened here, we see here, uh, they pledged themselves to God's rule over Moses and Aaron. They said, we will we'll follow the Lord. And, uh, uh, but that was uh, followed by a long uh, downward, uh, the word is apostasy, a falling away. We see here, which finally led to a point where they could not even accept a king to rule over them. And you say, how did it start out? Well, get here, look at it. Here's the, here's the progression of what they were doing. Number one, they had God. 
God was, a, that's a theocracy. They wanted God, they had God. Then it went from God to Moses. Moses to, was a prophet. He was the law giver. Amen. God gave them the law. And now, they, instead of listening to God, listening to the law, the law giver, it, it went to Joshua. Joshua was a spiritual, military leader there. And that's how it went. And then it went to judges, and God gave them the judges. Samson was in one of them, and, and many of the judges there. And that's judicial government, if you will. And then it goes from it goes from God, and then went to kings. That's monarchy there. And then we went from kings to the place now where they're saying in Jose here, we don't need a king, no king. It's anarchy, no government. We don't want anybody telling us what to do. Amen. That was their downward spot. Y'all see that? I'll tell you that in sin, Ephraim had made Jeroboam their king. In sin, the subsequent kings were crowned without the counsel or advice of God. Listen, when you don't go to God, you don't get help from God, listen, in sin, they, they had their own kings, and no wonder they had no power. They, had, they couldn't whip any enemies because they didn't get their authority and their approval from God. And there's a lot of people doing everything today without God's approval. Amen. You better be careful about that. That's right. Amen. And we see he was powerless. Their attitude was, was a king could not make any difference. They had this what's the use attitude, the indifference and, in, and an independent spirit gripped their hearts. And they trusted it in their own way instead of entrusting in God. They were apathetic about their sinful condition and they, they had no concern about the circumstances instead of repenting of their weakness and turning back to God. I'm going somewhere with this, so hang on with me. I, I'm just trying to tell you tonight, apathy, indifference, an independent spirit will harden your heart toward God and the needs of others. Right. It will. It will create pile of ground in your heart because these attitudes make a person uh, focus on themselves instead of God and others. We don't need a king. This is what we say. Speaking about yourself, your attitude, and your things, and God's wisdom and counsel, uh, you know, uh, God's wisdom and counsel embrace foolish, our selfishness. That's what it becomes. Solidifies and hardens our feelings and our concerns about Christ and other Christians. If we feel we have no need for the Lord, then we'll neglect our relationship to Him and trust our own ways. And that's going on every day. God's Word is considered foolish. Mm. When our relationship with Christ is weak, then our relationship with others are weak too. Right. When you don't have a relationship here, this kind of relationship is going to be weak here. Right. Your own brothers and sisters are going to be weak. People around you are going to get hurt because you don't have the right relationship there. Are you with me? Amen. And that's what's going on. Independence of God also leads to incarceration and enslavement to sinful habits. And the consequences of our poor choices and decisions. Now, these consequences can affect us for a lifetime. I'll tell you, if you let sin come in, and, and it will ruin you. It will take you farther than you want to go. It will take you down. It will take you places that you, hey, you regret. And I'm just trying to help somebody tonight. Oh, help us tonight. The Bible says in Revelation 3, I mean, uh, is this, there was a church called Laodicea. In Revelation 3, you know about it. He says, I know thy works, and thou art neither cold nor hot. How about that? Jesus said, Yo, I would that you were cold or hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, he says, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, here's a church that wasn't cold, it wasn't hot, they were lukewarm. And God said, I wish you were cold or hot, not lukewarm. Right. He said, therefore I'll spew you out of, out of your mouth. Why? Because, next verse, thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. And notice not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked there. Right. How about that? Let me take a little left turn here. I've seen some hard heartedness around here. I've seen some hard heartedness in some young people. Don't need your mom and daddy. Don't need your pastor, and you don't need God. Preach it, brother. And you won't let nobody help you 
touch you because, as Elvis used to sing it, I did it my way. You want to do it your way. And you got this little chip on your shoulders. You remind me exactly how I acted when I was your age. Are y'all listening? Huh? And that little chip is going to turn into hard heartedness. And you're going to go through your young, later teenage life and into your 20s with that chip on your shoulder. And you're going to miss all of the blessings of God and what God has for you in your life. All because you are so hard headed and hard hearted. What God's trying to show you is I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you. Some of you wouldn't even come to church. Some of these young people you know, wouldn't even come to church if it weren't for mom and dad some kind of connection with our families. Let me tell you this. I would quit church a long time ago, but my daddy said, if you live in this house, you're going to church. I didn't have anywhere else to live. Hello? <laughs> he put it down plain. I told you this before. The worst woman I ever got when I was age 11. I told daddy, I don't believe I'm going to go to church tonight. I can tell you, I don't remember what happened the rest of the day. I don't have no clue. I, I was trying to breathe the rest of the day. He looked me from one end of the house to the other end of the house, and he said, that subject will never come up in the McNeil house again. Amen. And it didn't. Praise God, I was ready to go to church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I didn't make the decision. He made the decision for me. And thank God for a daddy that does that. Amen. But when you get 19 and 20 and 22, you think you know everything. And you get real hard and indifferent. And you don't need anybody. And you don't need God. I'm telling you tonight, you miss them on your life. And you're naked. And you don't even know you know, what you're doing. I'm trying to tell you tonight, get on the Lord's side tonight. Amen. Get on God's side so you won't regret your years of young Amen. you what God can do in your life. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. We see here, as we look at that, God's, God's people frequently, frequently, I can't even talk, struggle with the Lord's rule over their lives throughout history. In Acts chapter 7, verse 51, he said, He's stiff thick and uncircumcised. In heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. How about that? One thing that it's terrible to resist the Holy Ghost in your life. Right. I tell you tonight, uh, God's people do it. Jeremiah 11, verse 7 and 8. For I earnestly, for I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, even, even unto this day. Rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice, yet they obeyed not, or climbed their ear, but walked everyone uh, in, the, in the imagination of their own evil heart. Therefore I will bring them upon all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they, but they did them not. I mean, they wouldn't listen to God. And boy, I tell you, it's a tragic thing. I'm going to close with this tonight. The Lord makes it clear. We cannot do anything without His help. Amen. Amen. Kenny Saints tonight, we need Him. Amen. You need the Lord tonight? Amen. Yes, you do. Amen. I don't care if you're 5, 25, or 85. That's right. You need God. Amen. 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 We need Him more than anything this world has to offer. Amen. He's done more for us. Than what we can we truly realize. He can provide for us what we are missing in our lives, and we depend upon him for our satisfaction. I'm gonna tell you, young people, something. The greatest day in your life is when you tell the Lord you need the Lord. Don't get so hard against God. He'll cause things in your life to come about so that you'll wake up. I'm grateful tonight that I can testify that He showed me that He's all I need and I made Him His. Everything I need. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says in John 15, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Amen. How can the branch ever live without the vine? Amen. Right. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Amen. He that abideth in me, and I in him, and shall bring forth much fruit. Amen. Amen. If you'll abide in the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, you can produce fruit, much fruit. But with, without me, he said, for without me, you can do nothing. Amen. 
We need Him. But we can't produce anything in our life. Let's be happy. Amen. 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 Luke 12, verse 15, He said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. How about that? People with great possessions sometimes make the mistake of depending on the things instead of Christ for their peace and happiness. Amen. Don't let things become your God. Amen. Right. Depend on the Lord. You need Him. Matthew 4, 4. Jesus told the devil when it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 20, verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? We can't without the Lord. We need the Lord's goings in our lives. Amen. Well, praise God. When we get proud and feel we do not need the Lord, then we, we're destined to fail. That's right. And our hearts get hard. That's right. We used to sing a song. Please, with us tonight, maybe we can sing it. We sing it. We sung it. Y'all come on and get these all that I need. I want y'all to sing it with me tonight. Amen. Are you grateful tonight? Amen. Amen. Are you sincere or insincere? Are you offense striving? Indifferent? Are you telling God like Israel, I don't need no God, I don't need no king, I don't need anybody? Oh, me. Come on, Lee, we'll sing it. If we know it, I guess we do. We sang it a thousand times. I guess we can do it. I appreciate my buddy moving in here with us. Amen. Amen. Are y'all going to join the church anytime soon? Or what, what's up there? Amen. <laughs> Amen. I say we vote him out tonight and then let him come back in. Amen. 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 Kind of indifferent to me. They need to get in one side of the fence or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I need you, God. Amen. 
I'm going to tell you, my life made a, 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 my life made a flop just like that. Praise God. Amen. I, I'm telling you, my school got serious. I got serious about school. I didn't like school before. All of a sudden, I'm on the knees. Hallelujah. I've never done that before. Amen. My attitude, my heart, and everything about to change. Why? Because He became all that I need and all that I want and all that I wanted was Him. Praise God. It changed my financial life. It changed my it changed my my school life. It changed my ministry life. It changed the course of my life. Amen. And I was hard and, and hard-headed and hard-hearted. I wasn't full of breath. I'm a fellow grand. He broke through. Hallelujah. Amen. I met my 39-year-old wife over here. Hallelujah. She's 39. <laughs> Best thing ever happened to me besides Jesus. That dear precious thing in my career. God gave it to me. He's all you need tonight. Amen. He's all you need tonight. He wants to know that you need Him. Let's stand tonight and pray. Heavenly Father, tonight, please help us tonight. Make it a point. Tell our Savior, we need you. You are our king. We must have the king of kings to rule and reign and have dominion and preeminence and authority over our lives. Lord, you're our leader. You're our guide. You're our comforter. You're our shepherd. We must. We must need you. Lord, we need you. We want to tell you we love you. We love you tonight. This preacher needs you tonight, Lord. I need you so much. He's praying in the prayer room a while ago, Lord. Brother Larry's praying. He said, Lord, we need you. Brother Kenny sang the song tonight. We need thee every hour. We need thee every minute. We need thee. We just want to tell you tonight, as God's people, we need you. We need you here in this church tonight. So help us. Help our leaders, help our church members, help our Sunday school teachers, help our youth leaders, help our choir members, help our piano players, help our singers, help us all come to the point where we need you. He's all I need. Take this invitation out of Jesus.
Samantha, I had my brain went south there for a minute. They said, we're already part of this church. We just want to make it official tonight. I like that. Amen. This is a dear, precious family. Amen. Amen. They jumped in here. They worked hard. Yes. And they helped Brother Kenny and uh, the youth group. And Brother Mark, we're, we're, we're so stacked. We're happy. Amen. We love your family. Amen. We love y'all. <laughs> Amen. All in favor, no one to say, been baptized, serve the Lord, and all in favor of these folks joining our church, give a hearty amen. 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 You be praying for them, and we love you, and, uh, and I don't know what come over you. I thought that I scared you. I thought something <laughs> wrong. And, and I didn't put it together. But you wanted to join tonight, so throw me off kilter there. But anyway, amen. it is wonderful tonight, amen. amen. And I'm grateful to see what the Lord has done. I believe we're going to be seeing a lot of this here come uh, pretty soon. Uh, we got families been looking in the door, and, and uh, we're, we're so grateful tonight. Y'all want to say anything, Miss Angie, Miss Brother Mark? Y'all, uh, y'all, you don't have to. Just <laughs> if you want to, help yourself. I care. It don't matter whatever you want to. Well, um, I'm just uh, God. God. <laughs> God, God's been good to us. Amen, brother. Amen. Uh, right. He's, he's allowed me to do things that uh, this old boy don't deserve. That's right. Amen. So, uh, <coughs> we, we was part of a church that uh, I was supposed to be in the leadership for several years. And uh, sometimes a storm, storm hits you. That's where we were. Yep. Right. So, but God led us here. Amen. And uh, let me say something. Enjoy the preaching you get. You, 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 you better not take it for granted. Amen. We're in the days that this preaching ain't not this is slipping from the church. That's right. So appreciate. What you Scott. Amen. I want to thank y'all for praying for him because Samantha and I and Matt were ready to do this for like three months after we started. Yeah. We were waiting on him. That's all so right. We Amen. just appreciate how you guys have embraced us. So we love you guys. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord is in it, I really believe. You two got anything you want to say? Y'all want to preach or say anything? <laughs> you usually I'm talk, shocked. Uh, you usually talk in the, I'm yeah, talking all of them. Miss, miss, <laughs> she's a talker. Amen. Well, this is a blessing. Amen. Amen. You come by, shake their hand, and uh, let's be praying that God will continue this. And we're grateful tonight to see Amen. this. And, uh, Praise God for them. Amen. Amen. And I'm happy. I'm happy for them. I'm happy. I believe. I believe this is God's will. I believe it. I believed it a long time ago, but uh, that's all right too. And you know, I I told them to try the spirits and try to make sure it's God. They, right, you better brother. make sure it's God. Yes, Amen. 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 But, uh, praise God. Well, all right. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Thank y'all for coming, and uh, we'll be back here Wednesday night. Amen. And then don't forget, uh, we got any Bible fellowship? Any? Tuesday night, the ladies fellowship Tuesday night. No, Bible study. Bible study, all right, Bible study. I'll get it right here for so with. And then don't forget Saturday's meeting as well. Saturday with all the workers. We'll have a good time together and eat us some lunch together. And then Sunday, next Sunday, vacation Bible school the following next week, okay? All right, let's be dismissed and a word of prayer. And uh, praise God. Thank you for these visitors coming. God bless you, brother. It's always good to have Amen. these folks come in here. And, and be with us tonight. So Amen. let's be trusty. Let's praise the Lord. And bow your head and let's all pray. And trusty, you lead us as we close in prayer. Dear Lord, just thank you so much tonight. And we'll be heard, Lord. I pray that you just take it with us and apply it to our life, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you do, Lord. All of our lives, Lord.